Welcome to this video on the topic of project lifecycle. Uh, you'll observe from the bottom right hand corner of the screen that we have 131 slides in this video. Now, this makes it an extremely large class with a lot of detail, a lot of information. So it's very wise if you stop the video from time to time, have a break, have a rest, Make some notes as you go through it, so stop the video, make some notes, rewind the video if need be. Um, perhaps turn off the video and, and return to it at a later time. Return to it the following day or whenever. Um, so perhaps logging off and logging back on is a good idea in this case because you come back to it fresh. There's a lot of information here and it's well worthwhile taking your time and doing it correctly. Having said that, let's start by looking at the project life cycle. Well, a project life cycle refers to the breakdown or subdivision of uh, a project into phases. We can imagine projects in phases. There's a startup phase, uh, uh, an initiation phase, then we have the planning phase, we have uh, a phase where it's implemented and where it's set up and run, and then we have a closure phase. So we, we can conceive of four phases, and within those there will be subdivisions. But projects tend to run to that sort of macro schema, um, a, a, an initial stage, a, a concept stage where it's thought about and then when it's planned, the second phase, and then when it's actually done, the third phase, and finally when it's all wrapped up. And you have to remember projects of course are limited time exercises. They're not like um, uh, batch production within a company where the company produces the same item over and over for to meet uh, customer demand in, in markets. Project life cycles and projects indeed are based on uh, a starting point and an end point. They do run out. They are time limited. Dividing a project into phases ensures workload is manageable, controllable and efficiently complete on time. So breaking it down into phases is seen as a good idea because it gives more control over the project and uh, the the owners of the project the person who commissioned the project will understand where the project has got to how it's doing what are the issues and so it's better able to observe the project as well as control it a project can be divided into several phases depending on the size and scope of the project I've talked about four phases four subdivisions. That's a classic uh, idea in project management. But we can conceive of there being other phases and these could be extended depending on the nature of the project under consideration. So we're not limited to four. We could have many more. The breakdown of tasks is, to, is referred to as the project life cycle. So the breakdown of tasks, the project life cycle, starting with the in initiation phase and ending with the closure phase. Now according to the Project Management Book of Knowledge, um, the PM Book, PM -B -O -K, 2004, um, a project life cycle uh, must define the activities and requirements in each phase. So a project must specify what its activities and requirements are for each phase, the phase it sets out. I mentioned four at, right at the start, if you remember, the initiation phase, the planning phase, the production phase or the uh, implementation phase, and finally the closure phase. So we had four phases. But whatever the number of phases uh, under consideration, there must be clear requirements for each phase. The project manager must understand when the phase is working well, when it's not working well, when it's achieved its objectives or hasn't achieved its objectives. 
How deliverables in each phase will be measured, verified and validated. Deliverables are the outcomes of the activities. So how will those outcomes be, be measured? How will they be verified that they're appropriate, they're good, they're usable and they should move to the next level? And how are they, they validated? How are they demonstrated to be, to be good? The human elements uh, who will be involved uh, and their roles and responsibilities. So it's important to understand who the people are and what are their competencies, their experiences, their backgrounds and what are their roles and responsibilities. There must be clarity in specifying roles and responsibilities. Otherwise there will be confusion in the project team. There'll be overlap. There'll be there'll be even issues about about who's doing what and and whose responsibility it is. And to avoid all of that, right at the start, it's important to have clarity about who performs a certain function and who doesn't. Observation of each phase and making suggestions for improvements. It's important to observe each phase and monitor what's happening to see if improvements can be suggested. Um, we learn by doing a lot of the time and the project team should observe the various processes that are being undertaken and try to improve what is being done and the way they're going about the activity. Most projects uh, pass through four phases from the beginning uh, of the project to the end, as I said at the outset. But as I said also, uh, depending on the nature of the project <coughs> um, and indeed on the personnel involved, there may be more than four phases. But classically we consider it to be four phases. The project life cycle typically includes the following phases. Concept and initiation phase. This is right at the start. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how to uh, set up the project, what it is, what is the project, what's it trying to achieve, what's the concept. Then the development phase, the design phase and the development phase. Um, it's looking at the the planning of the project. How, how will the project be delivered? Uh, how will the, the work be set out? How will the project be undertaken? And what's the design, what's the development that will be undertaken? And then we have the implementation or execution phase, which is <coughs> the doing part. This is doing the work, getting it, getting it done, working to the plans that were developed in B. So C depends on B. And then finally, commission and handover phase because the project is complete once the execution phase runs according to expectations. So hand it over at the end. Most projects pass through four phases from the beginning to the end as I said and it typically includes these four phases the ones we've just talked about. However Bear in mind what I said earlier, we could have more than four, but it's well worthwhile noting these because this is a good starting point and classically this is the way we'd see projects running. So I've already discussed them, but I just want to run across and emphasize that these are the, the four, if you like, basic phases that we encounter. You can imagine other phases being slotted in between. Now start with the concept and initiation phase. Well, this is the starting phase of a project. Uh, a need is established and a business case is developed. Aims, purpose and scope uh, of the project. So it's really based on entrepreneurship. It's based on this idea that someone thinks there is a good idea that some product can be made or some change to the production method can be made or some change to the organization and it becomes a project to see if it's a good idea. 
So it's examined. And this is the, the start-up phase. Uh, this is the question that must be answered. This is what the project is attempting to answer. This phase requires a feasibility study and investigation to determine if the project is viable. So the starting point is feasibility. Can it be done? Can this new idea be implemented? And if it can be, or if the evidence suggests that it can be, through a feasibility study, then uh, it's perhaps the case that uh, a project should be commissioned to look into it in more detail. This stage includes the development of a project charter or project initiation document detailing the project purpose and requirements. It's important to specify clearly what is the purpose of the project, what's it trying to do. And the best way to do this is to write it down. So have a project charter. Write down what's expected. What is the project focused on? And this will stop the project from drifting, drifting into other areas or uh, losing concentration or losing focus. So having a project charter keeps the team focused. What are they trying to do? Now, design and development phase. Well, detailed design of the project, including guidelines set by the feasibility study. So it's important that there are clear uh, design uh, parameters, clear design features that the team understand must be incorporated. These are part of the project. They're not uh, there to uh, embellish the project in some way or uh, make it more attractive. These, these are essential features of the project. This is what the project is trying to do. And these are, are derived in part from the feasibility study. But it's important that there is a detailed design of the project. The project plan is created and provides information concerning objectives, which we call SMART, the SMART objectives. That's an anagram, and it's dealt with in other videos, in fact, other videos on this particular module. But it looks at resources, activities, timescale, budgets, the deliverables, the outcomes, in other words, of all necessary requirements to get the job done. So the project plan uh, is a detailed document showing what resources are needed, what activities will be undertaken, the timescale, when it will be produced, what are the budgets, what are the outcomes, what are the deliverables, in other words. Um, looks at all of the, the relevant information and sets it out in a document. And then the project manager will be held to account against that document. Cost estimates are allocated and monitored by the project manager, detailing labor, material, equipment costs, maybe extended to other costs, overhead costs, for example. Um, so. What we've got is cost estimates that are put forward. And these cost estimates uh, will partially influence the senior management who will allocate the budget for the project. Now, design and development phase. Well, the following documents are produced in this phase. First, a scope statement. Now, this is a document stating objectives, purpose, and needs of the project. The deliverables, the outcomes in other words, and milestones. So the scope document states the objectives, the purposes, and needs of the project. It says what's going to come out of it and what are the milestones. So a very important document because it clearly states what the, the project should produce at the end.
the work break uh, breakdown structure WBS the breakdown of tasks into manageable portions um, the project may be sophisticated and large or it may be indeed small it depends but if it is uh, say let's say quite large it's necessary to break it down into manageable uh, portions where members of the project team can examine and work on that particular part of the project. Later the project management can take all of their efforts and assemble it into the final project. So looking at the work break uh, breakdown structure. It may use Gantt charts. Um, these are timeline uh, detailing project completion and task structure. Gantt charts are very popular in business and management and they simply show the starting point for an activity and the ending point and then to show a follow-up activity, a starting point and an ending point. So it's a, a visual way of using um, a planning tool just to, to show how the project is moving, what's being worked on currently and where it's heading and where it's going and when is the the completion date. Uh, communications plan, well uh, how will the project be communicated to the key stakeholders? Now the stakeholders here can be defined as uh, not just the department or the manager or the person who commissioned the project whose idea it was in the first place but stakeholders uh, can be quite widely defined for example uh, the stakeholders would be the uh, workers on the project the the workforce involved in the project they are stakeholders and they must be communicated with and informed about progress about issues about failures and breakdowns and so on so there must be good communications and a communications plan indicating what's going right and what's going wrong uh, that should be honest and put forward so that the stakeholders the various stakeholders can see what is happening with the project and finally here we have risk management this is contingency planning preparing for on foreseeable risks or situations. Uh, we know that the world can surprise us. We know that things can go wrong or not work the way we anticipate. And with a project this can be uh, quite dangerous. It, it can end the project. It can, uh, it can damage the project so it can't recover. So it's important that projects have got contingencies. The, it's similar, similar to what if what if that happens? What will we do then? What if this happens? What will we do? And having contingencies prepared so so that if something uh, were to happen which was not anticipated at least there's, there's some framework for them to work around. They have got many suggestions. They may not be specific to what has actually happened but they have got suggestions for, for different situations and they may be able to uh, rework the project in a way which enables them to carry on. But they should have some risk management points uh, included in their document. Now implementation or execution phase. Well, execution of the project as outlined in the development phase the project is in motion and all required activities take place to complete the project. So this is when it's moving. This is when the project has moved away from planning, moved away from um, designing the project into execution. It's now been implemented so that the, the project team can now observe it working to see if it meets the expectations and if it meets the requirements, the objectives that were set out originally. This phase is uh, focused on ensuring the project is successfully progressing. Continuous monitoring and process reviews 
are required in this phase. It's essential that all parts of the project are observed, monitored, checked, and that there is good feedback and regular meetings to discuss how the project is running, how it's working, what are the issues, um, what's happening that was not anticipated, uh, how well are the different parts working. So it's, it's important that there is good observation and report back. Next is the commission and handover phase. Well, this phase is uh, project completion and closure once the deliverables have been achieved. So once once everything's been done, it's just the project is closed down. Projects are for fixed periods of time. They have start and end dates. So once the project is completed, the project is closed down. Project documentation and deliverables are handed over to the intended stakeholders and in the um, app appropriate communication format. For example, report, presentation, demonstration, whatever it is. Depends on the on the nature of the uh, the project. What was the project designed to do? To make a new product, or vary an existing product, or uh, introduce a new production process, or a new training scheme for the HR department? What was it trying to do? And whatever it was trying to do, um, hand over the documentation that's appropriate for that. And three is the termination of the project, including the enclosure of contracts, resources and all activities. So all who are working on the project will return to what they were doing before the project came into existence. So it, the commission and handover phase includes elements uh, of reflection. Yeah, what went well. So it's it's important that the project manager is able to reflect on on the whole project. What did they do well? What what was surprisingly well done that perhaps at the start was was seen as a potential problem? What 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 went what went right? Also, what didn't go right? What went wrong? What issues did they confront? What did they have to solve? Uh, what problems arose? Uh, how improvements can be implemented in future projects? What What's the learning out of the project? What can be taken into subsequent projects within the business? So if uh, a new project is commissioned, can the existing project shed insight into how to go about doing it? The effectiveness of research methods and data collection techniques. Um, it's important to be aware of the shortfalls of all techniques just about that are used, but some are very well established in the literature. Having said that, they are still subject to error, and uh, it's important that the project manager understands the limitations of these techniques and not just take the results as datum, as, as set, in, in, uh, set in cement. It's not the case. Look at the reliability and validity of the project outcomes. Um, can it be replicated? Can the project be replicated? And will the same result come about if it is replicated, if it's if it's done over and over, will the same result happen? And is it reliable as well? In other words, uh, are the techniques that were used, are the processes that were used, are they likely to give reliable results? So the onus on the reviewer, perhaps the project manager, in reflecting on the project is to to try to determine how reliable were the techniques and also uh, if the project was done again would they get the same outcome and these are important questions let's look at some of the uh, issues arising from the various um, 
energy expenditure onto various phase levels. So if we start here by looking at tasks, and on the vertical axis we've got effort. Now, we can imagine marginal effort to be something like that. Um, marginal effort means the effort uh, of conducting or producing a particular task. And as we move through the production system, at the start we are just thinking about it, so there's very little effort involved. We're thinking about it, we're designing it and talking about it. Later on, as we move down, I'll just put the cursor onto the screen. Later on, as we move down here, we can see that it becomes much more effort into each task. Then when it's completed, it starts to fall off and finally it's over. So if we take task one, um, the, it's the effort to complete each individual task. That's what we mean by marginal. It's the effort to complete each individual task. So look at task one. What's the effort required to complete task one? Look at the task two, and look at the effort required to complete task two. So the effort to complete task, task two is indicated with the uh, face bracket. So effort for task two only. Now, the total effort is the effort from all the tasks added together. So the total effort curve is much higher. The total effort for task one and two. That's how we get the total effort. It's the, the effort for task one added to the effort required to make task two, which gives us our total effort. So we've got um, our two curves, our total curve and our marginal curve. Now, <coughs> we can also insert in here our phases. We have our concept phase, design phase, implementation, and handover. So we had four phases, and we've just put the four phases in here. We're going to assume here that we just have the four phases, the, the more classic uh, setup, the more classic thinking here about projects with four phases, concept, design, or planning, if you like, um, implementation, and then handover. Now if we insert those underneath, we would have, very similar to a Gantt chart, we have concept, which is the, I'll just put the cursor on the screen again, this, this green line running across here, that's our concept, our design, our planning, if you like, running across here, implementation, running down here, and handover over here. So we have uh, a way of looking at the project life cycle and the effort required within each of the phases. Now let's um, talk about effort level. Well, the initial and planning phases require few resources and costs. These phases are mainly concerned with document development and planning. So at the early stages, it's thinking about what is the project, what's going to happen, and it's a paper exercise as well. As well. The planning part is paper exercise where the team sit around and decide what are the various uh, measures that have to be taken, what are the various processes that have to be undertaken, and how long will they take, and they come up with estimates for that, and it's all written on paper. So the, the resources and the effort is not very much at the early stage. It's very important work because if it's wrong, uh, everything else will be uh, be wrong subsequently. So it's very important, but it's not sapping a lot of effort. The completion phase uh, is the complete shutdown of resources. Fewer costs and resources are required at this stage because at the very end, it's closing it down. So it's a question of just disposing of the assets for the project 
handing it over and also handing over the um, the documentation so that's quite straightforward the major costs incur in the um, implementation that's spelt wrong I'm afraid implementation phase so these notes were put together at speed uh, so implementation phase just to emphasize it in other words when the project is being delivered and when it's under production uh, so that the deliverables are being developed and being delivered at the end so we have the process of doing it so if you like with the total project life cycle we have a start and an end which gives us a life cycle the total time is measured from start to end and then we have the plan stage and finally we have the accomplish stage the outcome stage or the doing stage the active stage Uh, phase one is concept conceive of the project think about the project what is the project why is it necessary what will it do why is it desirable make the case for the project phase two development phase plan it think about it think about the issues the problems go through it all and phase three is the implementation um, or the execution phase now the execution phase is uh, that's when it's it's actually been done that's when it's been worked on so it's that's the implementation phase and the last phase phase four is the termination phase now what I'm going to do is to look at these four phases in a little more detail and talk about the the amount of effort in each of these particular tasks so we're going to start with phase one you see it's in red already uh, in preparation for the next slide the other three are in black so we will start with phase one this is the concept or if you like to conceive conceiving of the project thinking about the project so here we we gather data we identify a need there must be a need for the project we establish this need we we establish that there is a case to be made uh, a project is worthwhile based on the need and with this we establish goals and objectives what do we uh, expect to come out of the project what are what are the objectives of the project what should it achieve what should it um, render and we also have basic economics that uh, it should uh, pay its way it should uh, generate revenue in excess of its costs uh, if it's successful that's certainly the case it should be possible to do this whatever the project idea was it should be possible to do it it's it's not just fantasy this is something that can be done it's feasible but also it's important to know who are the stakeholders there may be a particular department in the business who is the stakeholder or departmental manager who may be the stakeholder um, but there will be other stakeholders uh, the team the project team are stakeholders the project manager is a stakeholder so there are many stakeholders who need to be consulted and informed and kept informed about the project and what's the risk level associated with the project is it high risk or is it low risk how do they work out the risk levels how do they uh, determine whether it's risky or not what's the strategy how are they going to go about performing this project how are they going to set it up 
uh, how will it how will it be implemented who will do what and what's the time scale what are the constraints it's going to work under decide on the potential team look at uh, who are suitable to work on the team and if they can be released from duties from their existing tasks within the business can they be released to work on the project and optimize the team so that it, the project is given every chance of success guesstimate the resources in other words guess the resources and estimate them but the two together you're guesstimating guesstimate the resources try to estimate try to, to guess how many resources or what do we need to do this project how much time and who will be involved and what products do we need and what capital equipment and what do we need to do it so have a, a reasonable guess at what's required look at alternative ways of going about it don't just pick one method to uh, perform this particular project look at different ways in which it could be done and select from the various ways in which it could be done and have a reason for the selection why were the other ways rejected present the proposal when all of that's done write it up uh, in logical fashion and then present it obtain approval for the next phase so seven is the the desired outcome of all of this is to get approval and move to the next phase the next phase is planning so if we go back to what we had earlier we've now moved from phase one into phase two phase two has now gone red so we look at the development stage well appoint key team members that's the first point make sure that the the team have got the right skills and abilities and experiences to enable them to work on this project effectively conduct studies uh, check out what has been done in the past with similar projects if anything um, look at the experience of the team on what they have worked on in the past and see if there's any overlap develop a, a scope baseline in other words uh, look at what the projects attempting to do and whether that can be done with within the 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 scale set by management the time scale and the budget constraint uh, look at end products what are the end products what will be produced at the end what's the desirable out, outcome from this uh, project what are the quality standards that must be met uh, what's the failure rate that will be accepted perhaps no failure rate will be accepted what resources uh, do the the team have access to uh, in terms of overheads uh, location uh, the, the team itself what what resources does it have look at the activities that they're going to have to work through and make sure that they have the ability to work through those activities make sure that they can perform good work good quality work and also learn from the activities and also take a, a critical view of the whole process so as to make suggestions which will be uh, an improvement on the project itself And then four well establish a master plan there must be a master plan there must be a, a plan that will guide the whole work otherwise the whole team are just going to drift they're going to drift along day to day and there's no almost no motivation because there's no plan there's no there's nothing guiding them 
there are no objectives to be met, no clear objectives to be met. So a master plan will throw this up. But also establish the budget, the cash flow. How much uh, will the, the project be given? Also the time scale, but that's a separate issue. But, but the time scale, um, how long have they got to, to make this? But the budget is very important to make sure that they can acquire the resources that they feel necessary to produce this particular um, product. The work breakdown structure uh, establish that so that the, the project itself can be broken down into parts and the team can work on individual parts and then assemble these parts into the final project at the end. But this means that teams can, can work on individual parts and produce good quality work, focus on smaller issues, not the complexity of the whole project, and then later assemble it together. And look at the procedures and the policies that have to be followed. In other words, uh, look at uh, how the uh, management expect the team to work. Uh, look at the the routine of work. Look at the way the the product itself moves from one part of the uh, product team project team to another part of it. So, look at all of the policies and procedures. What needs to be undertaken? What needs to be done? And assess risks. Assessing risk is very important. There could be failure at any time, failure due to mechanical failure on the part of some of the machinery or the equipment that's been allocated. There could be failure because there's a failure in skills amongst the workers. They haven't got the ability to do certain tasks. Um, there could be failure for many reasons. These have to be assessed. And ideally, some contingency plans put in place in case risks like these actually arise. Confirm justification. Um, when, uh, when the project is justified, when, when, it's, when it gets the go-ahead, it should be confirmed. And they will know that they have got a green light to proceed with the project. Uh, there should be um, a project brief which is related to the uh, the master plan but the project brief coming off the master plan is a more day-to-day -day document for the team to follow what tasks need to be done how they should be done and what to watch out for being careful about quality standards for example so all of that needs to be to be set up and finally, obtain approval to proceed. It's necessary, once all of this has been done, that they are given the uh, authority to proceed with the project. And then the project can move to the next level. So now we move to phase three, implementation or the execute part actually doing it we've moved away from the concept and the planning or the the design stage now we've moved into the implementation stage doing it so now we've got setup so now it's important to look at the organization of the project team how is the project team organized clearly there's a project manager who's at the top but how are the various members of the team organized are they working in groups? Are they working individually? Uh, what skill sets are going with what skill sets? How are they organized? How is communications set up? How does the team communicate uh, both between themselves and also between themselves and the broader organization? Uh, they may need, for example, to do some research online, perhaps, looking at some technical issues that facility should be there and available to them. 
then the team should be motivated and also detailed technical requirements need to be set out uh, there should be no surprises in terms of the technical requirements of the project the team should not be overwhelmed at some stage by by thinking this is an extremely complex project they should be they should be dealt with early on and they should be able to handle the complexity because of their own skill sets then establish work packages in other words uh, who's doing what on what day uh, who's working with whom um, what resources are required what's the outcome uh, what's the deliverable at the end of the day um, what are the work packages that have been set up develop a detailed schedule of work showing uh, each part of the activity and how the the activity is moving along the line and where it's got to versus where it was anticipated to be information and control systems there should be good monitoring of the work process to ensure that it is moving uh, in the desired direction that progress is being made uh, the information system uh, should enable the project manager and those responsible for the project to see issues that are holding the team back and uh, also issues that are uh, easy for the team to achieve so there will be support and understanding for the team as they work through it um, it may be from time to time additional support is required uh, required uh, additional expertise may be called on additional workers brought in because of their uh, additional abilities to perform particular tasks and when, when they've completed the task they will leave the team they're just brought in to to do that particular task procure goods uh, procure goods and services uh, it's necessary that there is good procurement that whatever raw materials or components that are required are bought in and uh, made available and that these are good quality and will uh, not in any way hold up the work because of faults or uh, tolerances which were uh, not acceptable so good procurement policy is required and then execute the work packages in other words uh, get the project started get it running get the, the members of the team into their small groups and get them started with their their individual tasks and through their individual tasks get them to work together on perhaps group tasks uh, but they have responsibility for particular parts of that group task so make sure there's clarity and good understanding of the requirements for each member of the team direct monitor forecast and control uh, look at the the scope of the project make sure that the scope of the project uh, has not grown to make it into a much larger project which will therefore may mean it's outside of its budget or perhaps quality will be impaired because the scope of the project has got bigger and there's more pressure on the workers involved on the on the project to deliver uh, perhaps deliver a bigger project than was anticipated and therefore quality may be compromised so make sure that quality is adhered to quality is important because this will reflect on the business generally should this project be successful and go back into uh, the run-of-the-mill operations of the business be incorporated as a function within the business it'll expect the, the business will expect it to have good quality and to generate good quality there will also be a problem of time 
uh, make sure that the time scale is adhered to. Uh, slippage on time will have a cost implication and the cost implication may mean that the budgets are overspent. Uh, in, in an effort to try and meet uh, the, the requirements of the budgets, uh, work may be, uh, and workers may be put under uh, quite significant pressure which again may compromise the quality of the product. So it's necessary to make sure that uh, scope, quality, time, that they are monitored, as is cost, as I've just mentioned. Next, resolve the problems. Um, now we move to phase four. This is the termination and finish. The the one on the bottom right. Uh, phase four, termination and finish. And you'll see, by the way, the reference here. It's all coming from Burke's uh, book on this topic. So termination and finish. Um, we'll finalize the products or the product. Make sure it's in a finalized form, form which is acceptable to the recipient, to the shareholder who commissioned it. Review. The, the whole exercise and accept uh, the uh, the findings of the review. Uh, if the findings of the review are not accepted, then something must uh, must happen. It must be reviewed again, and there must be some account as to why they are not acceptable. Transfer product responsibility. It now moves from the project manager to the person who commissioned the project in the first place. If it's successful, it goes to that department or to the person who commissioned it, to the stakeholder who commissioned it, and they may use it now as a part of their system. But the product has been transferred. Having said that, it's still necessary to evaluate the project, to uh, study it, reflect upon it, write up what went right, what went wrong, as I said earlier, and make good notes about the project and make those available to management so that in subsequent uh, projects, uh, learning can be had from this particular project. So it's necessary to document all the results, make sure that all the results are clearly documented and are passed on with the project. Then release or redirect resources. The team who were assembled to work on the project may now return to their activities uh, pre the project. Go back to the activities they were working on before the project came into existence. The resources within the institution, the the space that was used, uh, whatever it is, that's returned to its previous use. So all of that is, is wrapped up. And the project team, as I said, are reassigned. And that's it. That's the, the four phases and everything we can think of to say about the four phases. That's the Those are the sources that we were used uh, throughout this and that's about it uh, I did not mention at the start it's a very long and detailed video so I hope you've visited a few times turn it off turn it back on think about it do it again make some notes rewind it and just use it to try and make make sense of what we mean by the product or the sorry the project life cycle that's all we're going to deal with here, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.